The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. I'm Patrick, Head of Technology at professional services firm Collins SBA. I'm a former financial advisor who just loves solving business problems and creating better client experiences using technology. Join me each week as we unpack the tech on offer to advice professionals, stay on top of tech trends and help you break free from the analysis paralysis experience when building and maintaining a great tech stack. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world where you can build a complete picture of your client's financial wealth. With NetWealth, you can track and monitor external bank accounts alongside residential and investment properties. Join the dots with Zeppo, a client data warehouse that connects your CRM and other tech systems with NetWealth. Discover a world of client data at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. By advisor request, Ensemble has launched an advice tech space on its platform in partnership with NetWealth. It's your go-to source for everything advice tech related, from research to demos, case studies and insights. To learn how your peers are solving their tech challenges, big and small, head to the Ensemble platform or use the link in the show notes to join today. Today we're talking streamlining business spend management with Kyle Borgen, Sales Director at Wheel. So we actually use Wheel in our business and it's transformed our approach to business spending and expense management. We've dramatically cut down on reimbursement requests and it's given us more oversight on what we're spending on subscriptions. So leverage to ensure that software vendors are chasing us and not the other way around. And it's also enabled our team members to have the freedom and the trust to spend money without doing an internal pep talk before asking someone for the company credit card. There's also the security aspect. So we're no longer sharing cards and risking the details being compromised or falling into the wrong hands. Kale gives us some great insight into how Wheel is used and applies to businesses and associations in all industries. So I started by asking Kale what the oldest piece of tech he still owns is and whether he still uses it. I'm not much of a collector or hoarder, so I'd have to say it'd probably just be like a five-year-old portable speaker or something. Yeah, nice. And they still, they go hard. Like they still go strong, don't they? Like you don't really need to upgrade those very frequently. Yeah, mate. I still use it multiple times a week. Um, so it's it's gone strong. Lovely. And then I guess moving into within, I guess, the last sort of 18 months, two years now, are there maybe one or two cool ways that you're using AI either personally or in your work life? Yeah, I use it pretty regularly, but I think the most valuable way I use it is through like, uh, it's actually through a software tool that we use around conversational intelligence. Um, and I use it across like the entire sales team at Wheel where we essentially leverage this tool to help us with note taking and capturing customer conversations. The AI helps us draft follow up emails so we make sure we hit all the points and follow up actions. But it's also really useful for coaching purposes. So it kind of pinpoints potential areas of improvement or uplift and you can flag different things that one uh, customer account manager might be saying that that's really powerful and is getting good responses from customers that we can then leverage and kind of share across the team. That is really cool. So instead of, I guess, going based on the experience that the, the, the experiences that your team members are having, like anecdotally, you can actually see those insights and apply them at scale. That's really cool. Yeah, that's it. And it, it allows you to, what allows me managing a pretty big team to kind of, it flags me like little tidbits in calls. So I don't have to review hours of calls across the whole team. It kind of just flags me the things that I want to be aware of and allow me to kind of focus kind of feedback and coaching on those areas. That's a yeah, great example of just being able to use AI to focus on what's important um, rather than yeah, trawling through all bits of comms and, and trying to pick out what's what's some important. That's really cool. So, Wheel, I'm really excited to sort of jump into today's conversation about the tool. Before we do that, do you mind sort of taking us through your sort of origin story, Kale, and then how you've actually ended up at Wheel? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, Look, I probably have an untraditional well, an untraditional approach to kind of making my way into tech sales. 
studied finance and economics. And then when I graduated, I actually went into uh, an accounting role at a mid-tier public practice firm. So, did about two and a half, almost three years there. And essentially, it was a good firm, big client base, got exposed to a a wide range of industries and a, a good scope of work. But I was pretty frustrated with the tech stack that they were leveraging. But not only was it frustrating for me, it was also frustrating for clients. So, with this, I kind of developed a keen interest in how technology could make A, me more efficient, but also create a better customer experience for our clients. So, I got myself pretty involved in tech and then through that journey got introduced to the Australian country manager of HubDoc, which was ultimately acquired by Zero. Went and spent two, uh, two and a bit years at Zero, including six, six months um, in the Singapore office, which was an awesome experience. And then when I came back from Singapore, I got introduced through my network to Daniel Nyas, who's the CEO and founder of Wheel. And I guess following a, a few coffee chats and, and a formal interview offered me a job and kind of been at Wheel for four and a half years now. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. That's a bit of a, you've done it all, mate. That's really cool. Yeah. And you've had that practical experience as well as being on the tech side now too. I guess, yeah, Wheel, what is it and where does it sort of sit in the tech stack of a business? Yeah, so Wheel is Australia's leading spend management platform. I think like it's important to not confuse it with expense management. And what I mean by that is like we do all of the things that you would expect from an expense management tool, a mobile app for staff to upload receipts, code expenses, et cetera. But we've also built the front end experience. So we've essentially built a platform that allows finance teams, business owners, accountants and bookkeepers to log into a web app, add employees to the system and instantly issue wheel visa debit cards to employees located anyone in the world. The really powerful thing about how we go about issuing is that it's completely instant. There's no applications or bank wait times or signatures for employees to, to get a card and you can build really bespoke spending controls. So, you can customize limits for different employees and you can even restrict right down to different merchants or spending categories to essentially implement the spend policy within the the technology. I love it. No, that's a really comprehensive overview. So thank you. And we're actually users of Will in our business at Condus BA. And I think you've explained maybe three or four things that we're not actually using within the tool. So we're um, probably just using the the budgets and the subscriptions functionality. So that's where my sort of um, maybe experience comes in there. But like, do you mind sort of taking us through maybe a practical example or two, maybe with those sort of budget um, examples, and then we can move into like subscriptions and reimbursements and bills and things like that? Like, have you got any examples for us of, of like a day-to-day, if I'm in a business, I need to spend money, what does that look like? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, we, we kind of have incorporated this concept of budgets in Wheel, but I think like the really simple way to think about budgets is really it's just a way to unlock funds within custom spending controls. So, a budget is issuing cards and setting spending limits across those cards. We're a SaaS company that is just very horizontal in the industries that we service. So, we have sole traders in construction through to ASX listed enterprise companies using Wheel because every single business, no matter what size, has a need to access debit cards, make business purchases through debit cards, and ultimately the quit expenses, upload tax receipts, and feed that data into the accounting system. So, yeah, it's, there's, there's plenty of use cases. Um, one of the ones I love is in the disability space, support workers out taking their participants, you know, bowling, activities, grocery shopping, clothes shopping. Um, those types, types of industries were never able to actually access traditional corporate card programs through the banks. So, they love Wheel because we essentially allow them to instantly issue those cards and then the support workers aren't batching up paper receipts, driving them back or handing handing them back to the head office. They snap a photo. Everything's reconciled and done. Um, so happy finance team, happy support workers, and ultimately a better customer experience for their participants. Yeah, I love that example. That is really great. And you just yeah, sort of alluding to how easy it is. Like you just when I, when we first sort of started using it, and you know the concept of budgets, and it meant that one budget meant one card. I was like, oh my gosh, we're gonna have five, ten, twenty cards in my sort of digital wallet. But the fact that you just jump into Wheel in terms of the app, pick your budget, uh, just 
tick a box and it's then active in your wallet is really easy. And then just the prompting to then upload that receipt instantly and you don't have to um, remember or go back to that transaction ever again. And as you alluded to as well, like everyone wins in terms of you've got the the end um, client in terms of who that person was helping in the disability example, you've got the team member, and then you've got the finance team as well that's not having to chase up people via email saying, you know, who spent $6 on orange juice at the airport three weeks ago sort of stuff that just holds up reconciling. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't underestimate the impact that the finance team can have through technology across the business. Like, we, we have an example. I, I flew down to Melbourne a few weeks ago to actually meet with a, a really large customer of ours and we, we spent a bit of time with the finance team. And they shared a really awesome story where they had employees that they would never really speak with walking in the office and giving them a hug, just saying, thank you so much for implementing Wheel. Because they didn't have to spend their own money and claim a reimbursement and they weren't doing Excel spreadsheets or reconciliate reconciliations back to you know, an MX statement or whatever it is that they've they've exported at the end of the month. Another great example, and I'm probably jumping the gun here in terms of a question for you, but in terms of team engagement, like that's another added benefit, right? Like do you do you think that Wheel enhances that? I think at the very least it's creating that freedom within boundaries to just give people a permission to spend money without having to ask for it every time. Yeah, yeah. I think it, it absolutely does. So I like to think about it with business spend or employee spend within a business as this concept of rights and responsibilities. And and Will makes it feasible to give everyone access to a corporate card because you can go so granular on the corporate cards. But with that right to spend money, there's a responsibility to acquit expenses. So, we've built the framework and the guardrails to essentially drive accuracy and efficiency of expense report completion across the business. But more broadly speaking on, say, employee value, we see so many interesting use cases where they give out gift cards and spiffs and bonuses through will cards. Instead of putting an MX card or a corporate card behind the bar at the Christmas party, they just spin up a budget and everyone draws down from a shared budget. So, there's a lot of interesting ways outside of you know what we specifically built the product for that organizations are using to drive additional value within the business. I love it. And as you said, like every business has that same problem, like from the, as you said, the sort of construction business there to the disability service and the big business that you were flying down to see as well. Like it's just a, not even an Australia wide problem, like it's a worldwide issue. And I think you've solved it in such an incredible way. I mean, we've, we've talked about the, I guess the standard sort of corporate, uh, corporate card nature of it where we're sort of tapping and spending. Do you mind sort of taking us through? The subscription functionality because I think that's really really powerful uh, in terms of giving leverage back to the the business and especially in financial planning or professional services where our tools aren't really integrating that well which means that we're having to spend or use multiple bits of tech uh, so which means multiple payments and, and cards etc yeah do you mind sort of take us through the subscriptions functionality and how that's sort of a little bit different to the standard budgets yeah yeah absolutely so the subscription tool, look, it's not one that people necessarily come and inquire with Wheel about, but it is one of those ones that once they they turn it on and start using it, it kind of keeps them happy and a, a long time customer for us. The way I like to think about subscription tool is actually actually to reflect on my personal life. You know, you've got Netflix, Spotify, gym memberships, all these direct debit payments that are connected to my one singular debit card or credit card. If I lose that card, it gets compromised. I've got to cancel it. All those direct debit payments now decline. I've got to log in and update those. Our subscription tool essentially solves that problem around managing direct debit payments that are traditionally connected to a single card. And for businesses, this is 10, 50x because they have 100, 200 subscriptions. So essentially what it allows you to do is to spin up an individual unique Visa debit card for a specific subscription or direct debit vendor. You can assign an owner of that in the business. You can automatically or pre-code it to the GL, to your subscriptions or software, for example, in Zero. And then as soon as that payment is made, we code it, we feed in in Zero, it's reconciled. But the really powerful thing is if you want to freeze or cancel that subscription, you can just jump in and freeze or delete the card and that vendor will never be able to charge you again. 
I love it. Yeah. And I think, as I was sort of mentioning before, just that leverage switch over. So instead of, you know, us chasing that vendor for a refund because they've stinged us and we forgot to cancel, it's the other way around in terms of it's failed or even the limits, like they might have cheekily increased the, the licenses or something and it's gone over the, the approved limit on that card. It's just so powerful and it's been a game changer for us. And as you mentioned too, you know, historically or traditionally manage with one card. Like if that card goes and your stuff, like you're spending half a day just changing subscriptions or just waiting for them to fail and then just disrupting your business in terms of workflow and productivity. And That's it. Yeah. And the other thing too is we also use it as like a free trial card. So it might be five or ten bucks on there, but use that card to do a free trial. So therefore you don't get stung with the 14, 30 days after you're paying full rates for it. That's really cool. Carl, I'm aware that there's adjacent products within Wheel, so I'm excited to learn more about that as we get through the episodes of bills, things like bills and reimbursements. But within your core products, so cards and expense management, are there any sort of features in there that aren't as utilized as you would like to see or just sort of lesser known about? Yeah, definitely. So we released a really interesting feature under the core product of expense management about two months ago, and the adoption's actually been really high, but probably less well-known um, in market. And the feature's called card blocking. And the reason we built this is because with, you know, maybe call it legacy or older expense management systems, you could have all the bells and whistles and the app to for staff to upload receipts and code expenses, but there was no way to actually create a behavioral change and drive compliance. And every organization has those, call it, you know, delinquents that really consistently fail to upload receipts. So, we kind of asked ourselves this question and we went to customers on like, how do we actually drive the compliance and create a bit of a behavioral change in the business that ties back to that like rights and responsibilities around spending company money? So, we built a feature, it's called card blocking and essentially, it's really simple Finance teams can enable this feature and essentially set a certain amount of days whereby if any employee in the business has an incomplete expense report, so the receipt hasn't been uploaded for that set period of days, our system will automatically freeze their card. They'll get notifications about this and then only until they acquit that expense and upload or complete all of the required fields, we will instantly then unfreeze the card so they can begin spending and transacting again. No, that's really cool. And I think I'm actually one of those delinquents, so they probably need to apply that to me. Like I think, <laughs> but just the, I mean, we sort of talked about that before in terms of how it pings you with that notification to upload that receipt. But I can go, if I don't do that right at that time, I can quickly go into the app, see my long list of incomplete, uh, incomplete expenses, and then quickly upload those receipts or even mark it as, as no receipt. Um, in there as well. So that is really cool. Is there any any other features or things like that along um, in that sort of core product that you want to touch on? Um, I mean, we also recently built some customizations around marking no tax invoice. So you can make specific cards, for example, ha- the receipt be mandatory just to drive up again that governance and audit compliance. Again, really big for 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 organizations that go through an audit, making sure that every every receipt is attached. Nice. And then I guess moving into that sort of maybe less sexy functionality when it comes to sort of bills and reimbursements, um, I think yeah, reimbursements is something that's really probably largely being solved by that corporate card um, provisioning. And I mean, I, I believe there are still businesses out there that still use either a Word doc or a spreadsheet or a combination of the two to even just request the permission to spend money. But do you mind sort of taking us through, yeah, in detail, the bills and reimbursements functionality, Will? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So reimbursements, I think it's an interesting one. Like why would we build a reimbursement tool when we've done such a good job solving the corporate card problem? And it's just because, you know, if a business has, say, 100 employees, there's potentially five to 10 that are really infrequent spenders and they only need to make one payment every six months or once a year, for example. So we just built the functionality because our customers wanted a platform where they could solve all of the employee spend needs within the business. So we built reimbursements essentially through the app or through the web app on your computer, upload your receipt, code it to the GL, 
You can then route it through a custom approval workflow based on that user's line manager, budgets, departments, etc. But the really powerful thing is as we're um, a fintech platform, on that final level of approval, within the hour, we can actually process and pay that reimbursement back to the employee within the hour. So, they're not wait- waiting two weeks or a month or whatever it is to wait for the payroll or the AP run. We can actually automate that again, feeding the, the transactional and the expense data into your accounting system in real time. That's awesome. I actually wasn't aware of that either. So, yeah, just the, the manual nature and the time delay of, of getting that money back if you need to be reimbursed, reimbursed for something, especially if they don't, for example, accept card payments, for example. Um, I think that is really, really powerful. And yeah, and as you said, that's that's automation that can be set up within or a workflow that can be set up within the platform. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Takes about two seconds to enable reimbursements and an approval workflow for your reimbursements. You're going to probably spend about two minutes setting those up across the org. It's pretty user-friendly and easy to set up. Yeah, nice. Now, I guess speaking of, of minutes in terms of setup, What's the sort of onboarding look like? I assume, I mean, for our experience, it was really quick and really seamless. But um, do you mind some talking more about that? Like, if we, if we, yeah, you know, as a new business, sign up to Wheel, what does that sort of process look like, and and getting started, the sort of time frame we're looking at? Yeah. So, as a financial service provider, we do do a KYB, know your business review or verification for every business that that signs up to Wheel. Look, this can take twenty minutes to kind of three days or or up to five business days, most of the processing or the majority of the processing happens in the background. But once you've verified your business, um, you're ready to go. And I I think the fastest we've seen from funds deposited into the wheel account to a card payment made and the transactional data into zero was like two minutes. So, once you go through that step and our team hand told you through the whole process, you're ready to go. And then for larger organizations, we have an onboarding implementation team that that heavily supports um, the setup of the account. Um, And we have a story, one of our our large customers, Michael Hill Jewelers, they actually onboarded and and we got Wheel rolled out with all of their GL cost centers, everything mapped and a card issued to every store across Australia, New Zealand and North America. We did it in less than 24 hours. Goodness me. International too. That's that's incredible. Um, yeah, and it really is as simple as I'm just reflecting on like we've, we had a really seamless onboarding experience, but then also, as you sort of mentioned before, if I need to provision someone a card, I can use just that easy and they get that notification on their phone, the card is ready to use and it is really just a surprise and delight tool. Like everyone, everyone wins. Um, really cool. Just, do you mind if we sort of talk a little bit about integration? I know we've sort of touched on the GL stuff there in terms of zero, but is that the core um, sort of integrated platform that's powering the tool to make it so efficient for businesses? Or are there any other integrations you can maybe touch on? Yeah, we we have a integration with kind of the core SMB accounting systems. Um, and then again, our onboarding team kind of support pretty heavily with um, building kind of custom mapping for those larger ERP integrations. Zero, you know, being in Australia is probably the most common integration used across our customer base. And I think it's probably important to note like different areas of our product interact with zero differently. Like cards and expense management is like a spend money transaction, bank feed, match it up. Whereas reimbursements and bills will create bills and then they'll kind of mirror the zero workflow stages. If it's in a an approval workflow within Wheel, it'll be in zero as pending approval, for example, right until our system automatically pays that supplier, we'll mark it as paid and then match it to the bank feed once it pulls through. Nice. So, yeah, elimin- that, eliminating a lot of that double entry. And I'm even thinking now, we can I can probably delete the zero expenses app off my phone in terms of being able to use Wheel for all of that. So, that's one less app on the sort of home screen there. No, that's really cool. And then I guess sort of moving forward and and talking about maybe the development path, is there anything that you're particularly excited about that's coming up or do you mind sort of talking about the roadmap and what's what's coming up for Wheel? Yeah, yeah. So I think for me, we probably haven't spoken about it too much so far, but I'm probably most excited about the investment we're putting into bills and approval workflows. And essentially, like what we're trying to solve there is within an AP process, there's so many tools, right? 
you might e- you have an email address and you're forwarding directly to Zero or to an AP automation tool. Then you might be emailing back and forth to get approvals and review of those bills, or you have some kind of different tool that then pulls data for routing approvals through. Then you once approved, you export that ABA file, you import it into the bank, and then maybe have dual signatories there to process and pay it. So we've been investing heavily into consolidating that tech stack and that workflow to be able to facilitate the end-to-end processing wheel. So email forward your bills, extract the data, code it all, raise it in zero, route it through multi-step approvals, and then our system will automatically pay and even automatically on payment send a remittance advice to the supplier's email address confirming the payment. Um, So that's really exciting and kind of the next step on that is unlocking international bills. Our customers have demand for paying international bills and suppliers. So we're working really hard to bring that to life. Very cool. No, it's very exciting. Like that is just, yeah, it's just something that needs to be automated and you're working on that, which is really cool. And I think all it takes is one one sort of invoice or one subscription in US dollars for a total fall apart. So I think that's really cool as well. I guess thinking longer term, Carl, like we've spoken about invoice payment automation and what's coming there. Do you think there's an element or place for AI in all of this, maybe longer term or in the platform as a whole? Yeah, I think it's a really interesting question. I think there is room for AI, but it's really just to play a supporting role. And if you think of, of a business that has multiple employees transacting you know, every single day, uploading receipts, it's like, how do you support the finance team or the accountants and bookkeepers to prioritize where they actually review? You're not going to necessarily go line by line and review and essentially do an internal audit on all the spend. But how do we essentially leverage AI to like flag potentially at risk or out of policy expenditure? So I think one interesting implication of AI in kind of the spend management space is even something as simple as tax invoice validation. How do you know an employee hasn't just taken a photo of a coffee cup as opposed to the tax receipt? And really, if you come across that, it's probably by chance. You might have just clicked on a few to just check and and validate them yourself. So I think there's really interesting implications of AI to essentially bring to the attention of the finance team the expenses that are potentially out of policy to prioritize a review or approval step and then marking as the other ones is like low risk and kind of just business as usual. I love it. And maybe another quick example of that would be we might have escalated from taking a photo of the actual copy cup, but even you know the FPOS receipt being uploaded instead of the tax invoice. Like I'm sure that happens a lot. Absolutely. Absolutely. And AI could solve that problem. Yeah, easy. Awesome. Kale, thank you so much for your time today. What's the sort of best way to get started or to learn more about Wheel? Best way to get started, I'd go to, to letswheel.com. There's a, there's a ton of resources in there. We've got some great expense policy templates um, that you can download. And if you're interested to, to engage with one of our product specialists and learn a little bit more, just request a demo. It's a, a 30-minute time commitment and you'll kind of walk away with all the information you need to know whether or not Wheel is going to add value to your business. Brilliant. Kyle, thanks again. Thanks, Patrick.